shop. Um, got some good clothes in there, just streetwear, just going there and whatever I wear and run away casually on the street. I wear tracksuits, tops, I wear this starter gear in there, um, this Carl Carney gear. Just streetwear, basically, and I'm into streetwear. I'm not all, always into dressing smart. As you see, today, I, this is my summer look. Got my Gucci sandals on, got some shorts on, just a top, just chilling. I got my Jeep here, just taking the breeze of storm, you know, taking the breeze. Cruising smoothly, isn't he? And it's been smooth progress in most places. I wonder, actually, if that was legally parked or not, but I don't see him being towed away in Sheffield, actually, do you? Yeah, I think he's the hometown favourite, and... I'd be very unlikely to see him uh, getting any uh, hassle from traffic wardens. You obviously rate him, but is it fair to say there are still doubts in your mind about well, his I think we, potential? You know, we would all be doing ourselves a favour if we hold a little bit in reserve, but there's no doubt about it. He's one of the most exciting things we've ever seen, and it's easy to get carried away with it. But it'll be interesting to see how he handles a former world champion. And this guy is a bit of class, on the downward slope at 30 years old, but he's certainly a classy performer and he could pose an interesting threat to him. Thank you, Barry. From Scotland to Somerset, Prince Nassim Hamid has been building his support and the support is here at the Albert Hall. He's next into the ring. A big night for him. It's live on Sky Sports after this break. Watching Sky Sports. Join Green Flag National Breakdown right now, and there's no need to worry about breaking down miles from a big time venue here tonight at the Royal Albert Hall, live on Sky Sports. Nassim Hamid against Juan Polo Perez for the WBC International Super Bantamweight title. Our master of ceremonies is Mike Goodall.
overture. by the World Boxing Council International Championship Committee, whose supervisor at ringside is Mr. John Morris, General Secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge this evening, Mr. Nipper Reed. The judges at ringside are Mr. Daniel van der Weel of Belgium and Mr. Sergio Silvi of Italy. The man in charge of the action in the middle of the ring and also scores the contest this evening, Mr. Mickey Van of Leeds and the timekeeper, Mr. Michael McCann of London. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, from the world's famous stage of the London's Royal Albert Hall, live and exclusive throughout the United Kingdom and Europe on Sky Sports, big time boxing, it's big fight time. Sponsored by Middle East Broadcasting Centre, NBC and promoted by Frank Warren for Sports Network, who proudly present a contest of 12 three-minute rounds to decide the WBC International Super Bantamweight Championship. Between introducing the boxers, firstly, the challenger in the red corner, wearing the multicolored trunks, and coming from Colombia, he has
has a 55 professional record, 36 wins, 22 by way of KO, 12 losses and 2 draws. He weighed in at 8 stone, 8 and 3 quarter pounds. He's the former IBF Super Flyweight Champion of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome one Polo Paris. And ladies and gentlemen, across the ring in the blue, in the blue corner, wearing the leopard skin trunks, Britain's most exciting prospect for the boxer. He is ranked number one by the WBO and number three by the WBC. He is the former undefeated European bantamweight champion and comes to the ring as the WBC international super bantamweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Prince Nassim. caught the national imagination, this young fella. The referee, Mr. Vicky Van, will now give his instructions to the boxers. Vicky Van, from Yorkshire, leads to be exact, will give the final instructions once Hamed condescends to go over to get them. Check hands. No point him uh, going through any long-winded instructions because I don't think, think Perez would have understood a word. Right, what has Prince Nassim got in store for us this time? He's been specialising in quick wins. His three wins in 1995 so far have lasted a total of eight rounds. <laughs> Due to go 12, Prince Nassim in the uh, gaudy shorts if you needed the identification there is diving in Perez has seen just about everything on his travels around the world his world championship fights he's fought nine world champions but I don't suppose he's ever seen anything quite like Hamed before will we see pressure tactics from Juan Polo Perez. That's what he says he's going to do, try to put Prince Nassim under pressure, but there's that confident, almost arrogant look on the face of the Yorkshire Yemeni. And already Hamid getting through with shots from all sorts of difficult angles. He punches when he appears off balance. go to hit him and he's not there tremendous reflexes reminiscent really of an early Harold Graham who of course is from the same Brendan Eagle stable still there is the fire still burning for him we'll find out I think tonight in the past he's only had one first round win Prince Nassim the second round is his favorite for getting the job done terrible sensational upset if all the big plans for Prince Nassim were to be derailed here I've seen that kind of thing happen before mind you nothing's for certain it's been a 
very quiet open run, just sort of feeling each other out. You get the feeling there's some bombs ready to, to land from either one. Just landed a very clever little short left hook. Nassim. Perez trying to work it all out. You think your brickwork's safe as houses? Well, you're wrong. Water's attacking it right now. Stop it. With Thompson's water, Royal Albert Hall. Marvellous surroundings, the tiered balconies. Everybody within, well, maybe 90 feet of the ring. Prince Nassim Hammett sold the place out. 6,000 capacity, Mickey Van. Let's the action begin. This is the round, the second, in which Prince Nassim has finished off six of his 18 victims. Including the last one, Enrique Angelis, you might remember. He usually takes a round just to have a look at what's in front of him. Short little right is a clever punch again from Hamid. Starting to get through. This man may take more stopping than most. He has not been stopped since September of 1992. Polo Perez. He looks lively. He keeps moving the head well. Got a nice rhythm, Perez. Yes, you don't hang around that long at the top without having a few survival instincts. That's right. And if you look at his face, he's, he's very unmarked. Finding it hard though to lay a glove on Hamid. It's like punching at shadows, the crowd warming to his defensive antics. But one time, somewhere along the line, you get the feeling somebody is going to connect like that left hand from Nassim. Perez is down in round two. I'll tell you what, this fellow is a puncher. He's up with a count at about eight. Hamed really left in with that shot. Is he on his way to yet another quick win? Perez is in desperate trouble again. Down he goes. Get up, says Hamed. I think he was saying I didn't hit you that time. Perez is gasping for air. Is he going to get up or is this another second round win? It is. He's done it again. Another somersault, another victory. And the march towards a world championship fight, which surely now is an inevitability, goes on. You put them in front of him, he knocks them down. And he does it in good style. He does it when you least expect them to hit his man. He just left in that first one, got a left it with a shot and put his man over. Well... His family are so happy, he's from uh, Yemeni descent, they've got a corner shop in Sheffield, which is where Prince Nassim was born and grew up. And Juan Polo Perez is stopped for the first time since September of 1992, and for only the third time in 51 contests. Hamed has done it again. I don't know what more really you can say about him but um, well we await to see somebody test him but maybe he's so good that they can't test him that's right he really just left in there with that left hand very solid punch and then plays about when he's when his opponent's on the floor very cocky but he does the business in Perez well we wondered if he might have the credentials to provide a serious test but in the end he did not. But the problem, I think, now, as we just watch the finish again, is, is this fellow too good for his own good? Because none of the world champions are going to be queuing up to give him a shot, are they? I shouldn't think so. He, he caught him there with a, a short left hand again. Just there, uh, just... Just after this, he clips him. Well, uh, well, I think there, I think here, that... Nassim was saying to him, I didn't really hit you here, why have you gone down? That's right, I, well I thought it was the first right hand and then that little short left hand where he got you know, his weight behind the punch, but certainly when he went down, it wasn't a punch that hit him. And he was motioning him to him to get up, which he didn't do. 
That's right. Maybe he didn't think he'd hit him that hard, but he didn't get up. Well, I think you've got to say, on top of all that, that yes, he's done the job again. Yes, he's a marvellously exciting prospect. Yes, he could be a future world champion. But did it tell us anything we didn't know? The answer to that is no. And we await to see him in some kind of crisis, which he may have to go through if he fights the like of Mark uh, Antonio, Marco Antonio Barrera of Mexico, the WBO champion, or Hector Acero Sanchez, the WBC champion. Oh, the way he's Frank going in, he's just blasting them all away with ease. Yeah, yeah. We thought this would be a tougher fight. We thought it would answer a few questions, and he really just tied with them and put them away with ease. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes exactly of the second round, Juan Polo Perez has failed to beat the count. The winner by KO, Prince Nazim Ahmed. And still, WBC International Super Bantamweight Champion. That's his fifth defense of that title, Prince Nassim. And he's now got an amazing record of having won 17 out of 19 inside the distance. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your the seventh appreciation time he's winning round two. For the challenger, Juan Polo Palais. But he seems to have everything, doesn't he? Marvellous reflexes. And I don't think that Perez landed a punch. I don't think he did. He just, he pretty much did exactly as he wanted to do, Hamed. He just... He just played with him and knocked him out. Certainly not a serious punch. There's his dad. He obviously carries a great deal of power. He leaps in, he seems to get his full body behind the punch. Four wins in a total of ten rounds this year, Glenn. It's amazing stuff. He keeps marching on. But I still want to see him in a fight where... He is caught, he has to come through a little crisis to win, and then, then you'd know maybe that he has everything he needs. That's right. Or, or am I being choosy? Well, I think everybody wants to see him with his back up against the ropes in a really tough fight, but at this moment they're putting opponents in front of him, quality opponents, and he just keeps knocking them out. Yep, he's beaten uh, this fellow, a former Ladies world champion, Perez. Once again, uh, he's beaten still, Vincenzo uh, Belcastro. Freddy Cruz in six rounds, Armando Castro, very durable, four rounds. Enrique Angeles last time in two, Laureano Ramirez in three, that was a good win, because Ramirez has been back to Britain since and had a win. And uh, Prince Nassim is <laughs> endeavouring to get someone somewhere near our microphone. He's playing the crowd, milking the moment. He's an exuberant young man, he's a cocky young man, but he is a personality. And here he is now, talking to Gary Norman. Well, Naz, as they say in the best Hollywood tradition, follow that. Well, there's no need to rave on about anything now. And, I mean, you know I'm the best, and all the viewers know I'm the best. Sky's the limit, you know. I'll be world champ soon. Watch out. That man had been stopped twice in 13 years. What have you got to say about that? You know, I've told you before, Gary, when I hit them, I'm not making a song and dance about it, but believe they just can't take the punishment, they can't take the power. The power is extraordinary, and I'll keep saying extraordinary. It's, I'm blessed from God, what can I say, it's a gift. I think he could have got up the second time, but I think he knew it was in for if he had a got up, do you reckon? I tried my hardest, Gary, to call him up, you saw my hand, I said, get up, you got to take some more hammer, mate. But I'm too strong, and God's on my side all the way. I'll be world champion my next fight. Do you want to have a look at the end of the fight, if you sort of have a little peek down here? We should, we, just talk us through your, talk us through your punches. Now, let me see what I'm doing here. That was a straight right, and it caught him. After that, I, I think it really caught him, and it hurt him bad. But saying that, it could have carried on, and he, just, he meant to go down there. I don't know what happened to him. He was probably still hurt from the first one. Yeah, he was really hurt from the first one. But to tell you the truth, I didn't, that went even 50% of my power there. He didn't, really, he didn't even take a proper shot. Look, I'm calling him up here, saying, get up, you've got to take some more, boy. I knew after he weren't going to get up, so what, what the hell? There's a nice flip there. Look, just too good. What can I say? I'll be world champion in my next fight. I don't even have to explain myself anymore. People know. I ain't shouting my mouth off anymore. I'm, I'm the best and everybody knows it. I think of your division, though, you've got some good champions to beat. Barreras, Hector Acero, Sanchez. Do you fear any of them? Most definitely, I fear none of them. 
basically when I fight them, they're going to get beat just like the rest. And in style, early nights all the way. I ain't going for long 12 rounds, make it boring. People like to want excitement. People want to be entertained. I'm an entertainer and a banger and a champion too. I'm not bragging anything, but I'm too good. Too good is the word. And Frank, I've got to say, people watching that are going to say, well, we don't want to fight him. It's, it's difficult for you to find a fight. It is. The problem is he's got such power. You know, the, I mean, I've never seen anybody punch like this. That, that, you know, he punches like a like a middleweight, and he's hurting these guys. That guy took a serious punch the first knockdown. I was surprised he got up from that, and obviously didn't want to know after. And that's the problem we have with the world title. But the good thing is, is he's ranked number one by the WBO now, which is Barrera is a champion. And I believe after this fight, he'll be ranked number one by the WBC. So they're going to have to fight him. People in the game know Barreras is a very, very good fighter, though. So is Prince Nassim Hamid. He is, without a doubt, the best fighter in the world. No doubt about it. I leave the worst. Last word with you, sir. Last word with you. Last word with me, I mean, just wait till my next fight. You see a world champion. You're looking at him, Bill. You're just looking at him, boy. Boy. The Prince, that'll be king. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. That's four fights so far in 1995. My mathematics are not very good, as you probably know, but I make that 10 rounds of boxing. Is it a preparation for tangling with the best men in the world? Is he already the best man in the world? We'll be exploring some of those themes after another sensational short night's work by the Prince in just a moment.